is the minutes from are the minutes from last meeting mm -hmm. and anybody have comments look good to me yep i agree okay i move we accept the meetings from the april meeting second i could second it okay all in favor aye aye aye, aye. Okay. Opposed? Okay. All eyes. No opposed. Any abstentions? No abstentions. Okay. So, next on the agenda is COVID. Yes. <laughs> All day, every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, I, uh, you know, I'm sure you're all, you know, completely tuned into this, watching the news and and uh, you know, reading things online. Um, I guess in terms of Amherst, so we still have our core team, which is um, the town manager, assistant town manager, finance director, um, police chief, fire chief, superintendent of public works. Um, we were meeting seven days a week um, then we went down to five days a week. Now we're kind of at three days a week and as needed um, because uh, we've sort of hit this, this place where it's not like there are tons of things we need to talk about every day. Um, that'll probably change. I don't, you know, we're all, of course, anticipating what the governor will say on Monday, what he'll release. Um, I don't know if people saw the um, press conference today. Um, Not yet. No. <laughs> yeah. I've been listening to those in the evening. Actually, I like Governor Baker's press conferences. They're mm -hmm. well done. Yeah, they're pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I usually don't get to hear them until much later, but today I was particularly interested um, because we're fat, fast coming on Monday. So you'll find it's very yeah. interesting. There's a lot about testing. Um, which That's is what he the, said yesterday. Yeah. 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 So some um, testing is going to be ramping up at, I think it's 10 CVSs around the state. One of them's in Northampton. People will be able to drive up to the window and get a, um, a self swab stick. Um, so of course, all of this is, is balanced with, um, you know, really trying to learn what the efficacy of all these tests are also. Yeah. So, you know, this is a new test. Um, so we'll see. But getting back to, um, yeah, so we have our core meeting um, where we have, you know, sort of pivoted to talking more about what will reopening look like um, for town government as well as for the town in general. Um, uh, of course, one of the big topics the past couple of weeks has been masks because it's um, it's been confusing to people and um, you know there was this point where different towns were doing different things and a lot of public health folks we were advocating to the state look come out with something so that we all do the same thing rather than having be so many things be piecemeal. Um, and the governor really heard that. Um, so we're, you know, from a municipal side, the town manager is pushing for that with a, he's on a, one of the reopening, a small committee, not the major reopening committee, but he's on a small manager committee, um, where they're really pushing for things to be, um, not so much by region, but to be kind of statewide because, of the fact that even though things are different, for example, in Western Mass right now than Eastern Mass, what you're gonna see is if we don't all pretty much do the same thing, that people are just gonna to travel to different places. And of course that will ha happen statewide. I don't know if you know of anybody who was dying to go get their hair done in New Hampshire on, I guess it was Monday, but um, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, uh, let's see, so twice a week we've been having these little radio shows. I know Steve often attends. It's from 12 to 1230. 
Um, I talk on Thursday with Paul, try and give a bit of an update. People ask questions. Um, and then on Tuesdays, we usually have someone else. Um, this week, it was the superintendent of public works to give people a chance to ask questions and to sort of get information out to the community a little bit. Um, we're probably going to be decreasing those to once a week because um, the, the information gets archived, but then it gets old and we're not getting that many attendees. So um, we spent um, a lot of time uh, in the past, I don't know, seven weeks, eight weeks working on um, our homeless community and the homeless shelter. Mm -hmm. um, the shelter has closed. Um, you, I don't know if you've seen this. I couldn't have talked about it last month. No, no. Yeah. So we did the testing at the shelter and mm -hmm. then, um, we tested it in Amherst and Northampton and then Springfield was having some trouble getting ramped up. Then they did all their testing and what has been, um, you know, wonderful to find, but also very interesting is that at this point, our homeless population, um, in this section, you know, the pioneer, the lower Pioneer Valley and um, Hampton County, we're not seeing high rates at all of disease among our homeless folks. Now, there are places that haven't tested. Greenfield has not tested. I think last I heard, had heard Pittsfield hadn't either. Um, but that was pretty unexpected. Um, and, uh, you know, we were very concerned about all these congregate settings where um, the ability to social distance just has not been great. Um, so now we're pivoting to look at what are needs, needs of homeless folks during um, the summertime. Um, and then, of course, they'll be thinking about what happens when next shelter season rolls around again. Um, So yeah, so a lot of work had gone into um, preparing for that testing, creating the possibility of opening a quarantine shelter at Hampshire. Um, so that has just been, um, that quarantine shelter has just been deconstructed because we didn't have to put anyone in there, um, which was actually just so remarkable. Um, and uh, so as I said, that you know, this we've now sort of pivoted to summertime. Um, another issue that's just beginning to come up is the concept that um, cooling centers happen in the summertime sometimes, uh, mm -hmm. which is being brought up as an issue for folks experiencing homelessness. Though frequently the, the, the a really big need we see is for people who live in apartment buildings mm -hmm. um, who need to get out because they don't have air conditioning have often used public places. So um, that's something that we will be looking at. Um, it's a complex one as we're now looking at um, airflow and what it means in buildings um, and having people in buildings. Uh, let's see what else to update you on. Well, maybe I should open up to questions and then you'll help steer the conversation of, on this wide topic. Yeah, Julie, I really enjoyed those. Um, got a lot out of those uh, community chat sessions that you participated. One thing that came up today was in the future of contact tracing, uh, if that requires people. You said that there's pretty much being done now by Jen uh, and by the school nurses, but if it involves the uh, partners in health uh, contact tracing, there's a problem because people are not picking up their phone. And, and I just thought that was kind of interesting because people around here are not going to pick up a random 800 number, if, you know, know, just because there's too much spam, you know, too much unwanted calls. So how, how is that going to work? Well, the state is trying to roll out this whole um, answer the call kind of, uh, um, you know, PSA to get people to answer the phone. But it's a tough one, right? We've all just spent years like trying to avoid 800 numbers and trying to avoid um, like these callers, like when we don't know who it is. Right. So, so is um, there a, a caller ID that represents the, the organization? Like it says cold mass COVID something, or I don't know. It does. That's what the governor says. It they, says they said it's supposed to. On uh, the, I saw reading the Boston papers. They said it's supposed to, but they didn't say it is actually doing that. But. 
Mm. Yeah. yeah. So exactly. So mm. it's supposed to, it should. Um, <laughs> I think what they're finding so far is it doesn't always. Yeah. Um, and so then you get these 800 numbers. Um, and they so won't leave a message, right? They won't leave a message because of privacy concerns. Right. Right. Mm. right. Um, so, um, so, you know, this CTC has been being built up over the weeks now. Um, and just people have, there are so many minds working on this because there's just so many levels at which it needs to work, right? Um, and two of the big ways are that it has to interface with everything else we already do around contact tracing, which normally happens through our electronic disease surveillance system, MAVEN. So it's like making these two interfaces talk to each other. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of headway has been made on that. Um, but then this other piece of um, getting people to pick up the phone, getting people to feel comfortable. I mean, that's something that public health nurses have done for, for decades, um, you know, and uh, it's, it's hard even when it's, um, you know, normally, for instance, when we call, it says town of Amherst calling. A lot of people pick up because they're like, oh, what is it, you know? Um, but then there are people who don't because they're nervous. Um, and so uh, we've, you know, nurses have found ways to be creative about getting people to call us back. Sometimes we've left notes at people's homes. So um, I think that um, the CTC will continue to develop its skills. Um, and there's this great um, sort of communication with, with the public health nurses, with the health department. So um, there's a case appears and um, a, a local public health nurse like Jennifer or one of, of our school nurses has the opportunity for until 10 o'clock in the morning the next day to say um, that they want to take the case. So, you know, until we're overwhelmed, we're taking those cases. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it can get popped off to the CTC. Um, so I think what's important about that is um, having that for us, I'm looking at it partly for now as like a backup kind of thing, because, um, you know, if we get overwhelmed or if it's a weekend and eventually, you know, we want to start having some, some time on the weekends when we're not doing this, um, then the CTC will be able to step in there. Um, and I think, uh, you know, we're getting updates on the CTC four or five times a week. Jen is on two conference calls directly about MAVEN and the CTC. I'm on two about the CTC and the state and other parts of public health around, around COVID. So um, given how quickly this is ramped up, I think we're gonna get there. Um, and so, um, but on the other hand, what we're really looking at right now in Amherst is that um, our caseload is not that high. And we've been able to um, keep up with cases and to do the contact tracing. Um, and there's something about that familiarity of the public health nurse who knows the town and the school nurses that frequently, you know, were they're reaching out to someone that they know or have a sense of or a sense of the family. And um, so um, I think that's that's one of the strengths of our public health system in Massachusetts for those towns that do have active health departments is we know our communities. Um, of course, it's really hard in smaller towns where they just don't even have the bench. Um, the other thing that the, the CTC provides is all the languages, which is terrific. Um, because of course, this is a very international community as is a lot of Massachusetts. So having that language ability is just going to be phenomenal. Julie, um does the town handle contact tracing follow up with the University of Massachusetts employees or students or the University Health Services have a role there? That's a really good question. So we've always had a partnership with the university um, that's really kind of unique. Um, the university and the town of Amherst um, can share cases in this electronic system um, mm -hmm. and can view each other's cases. So um, 
Ann Becker, who is our um, public health nurse at UMass, mm -hmm. um, and Jennifer Brown and myself have always been able to view what's going on. And so um, UMass is following up with, um, with a lot of the cases, but there are these times when there's an overlap and so just like with other kinds of diseases where there might be an overlap. So an example in another time would be if you have someone who's um, a student at UMass, but is also a food worker, mm -hmm. then it's sort of shared that, that work to, um, to work with that student and then the workplace. Um, so it's, it's a little more complex with COVID, um, but there's great communication between um, the two public health departments, basically, and, around that. And, and so far, um, or at the current time, of the, the start of contact tracing is based on a positive finding, right? Correct. Um, um, that is changing a little bit now. Um, so the state just released some guidance that um, mm -hmm. So we're starting to see what are called probable cases. And we're following those up as though they are a definite case. Okay. Okay. Um, and so probables have had, um, they may have had, they've had serology done, some of them. And so serology, a blood test is showing you, um, did someone Old have bodies. a test sometime? Yeah. yeah, we don't know. Like, are they currently sick? So those are begin, being considered probables. Okay. And with this increase in testing opportunities, the idea is that probable folks should then get tested. If they're negative, uh, so the idea, the ideal is that a serology test and um, uh, a test for disease are actually gonna happen at about the same time, if possible, if not very close together. So that you're getting the, a lot of data that's useful, but you're also finding out, is that person currently infected and therefore needing to be in isolation? What about um, people returning from international uh, places that, uh, yeah, from international places in general, particularly if they're from a place, maybe they were sick there or, um, or, or don't know, were sick, did or didn't get a test, and they're, they're arriving in Amherst, does that induce a contact tracing event? Do you, does the town want to know about it? Um, it's a good question. Um, I, I know this is happening to some of my faculty, so I'm, I'm curious. They're on sabbatical, yeah. they're coming back, and uh, I want to know an answer for them. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> So, you know, early on, there were those notifications for foreign travel and, mm. and we were interfacing with them. That's not happening right now. Um, I, I, it is interesting when you look at, um, especially a university community, and I don't, you know, I am thinking that the university is making policy around that, that people would self quarantine mm. Yeah, there's guidance there. I just didn't know if the, yeah, you want to no, start, not. you know, induce a contact tracing event because of that or not. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Because, again, so your contact tracing event stems from a positive test or, like we're saying, these probable with the technology. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That yeah. Makes sense. Great. Yeah. I have a question. After our last meeting, I sent an email, but I don't know if you got it, about the Center for Extended Care in Amherst. And then I, there was something in the newspaper. How are things there? Okay, I'm sorry if I didn't reply. Okay. I've gotten a lot of emails. Yeah, but I figure. <laughs> um, yes, so the Center, of, Center for Extended Care, we've been in touch with um, since way back in the beginning. I, I don't have my date, but I wanna say um, it was the first week in April, end of March. Um, and they, um, they have great systems in place. So they, uh, early on, they had four people that they tested a long time in the beginning, even though they, they didn't really think that they even had COVID, but they wanted to um, do just an initial sort of test of anyone whose, whose symptoms were kind of changing from their regular respiratory status. And, the, and those four or five folks came back negative. 
Um, what happens for nursing homes around the state is whenever um, an event is happening, so normally it might be an event at one nursing home, um, a daily reporting system is triggered, which is called MAT. Um, and I have forgotten what that stands for, but as soon as coronavirus started, all the nursing homes had to start um, notifying the state once a day through the MAT program. And so that goes to the nursing home um, sort of oversight piece that is located within the Department of Public Health. Um, and so as uh, Center for Extended Care um, began to get cases, um, once they reached, I believe it was four cases, that becomes what we call a cluster of disease. And so then a state epidemiologist was assigned to um, that cluster. So now there's sort of two overlays of oversight for the Center for Extended Care. Um, meanwhile, um, our fire department um, keeps in close touch with um, the Arbors and with Center for Extended Care because, you know, they're, they're partners with them all the time because of, of calls. And so they have great relationships with them. And Jennifer Brown also is in constant communication with the two nurse managers at those facilities. So, um, and there's a piece where when nursing homes need equipment, they have two routes where they can get PPE or, or sanitizing supplies. One of their routes is through the fire department who can order things through MEMA. So we keep in very close contact with them about how they're doing on PPE, how they're doing on supplies, how their staff are doing. Mm -hmm. um, so about 10 days ago, um, a week from this previous Saturday, um, they were, they had uh, some people who were out sick, people who'd been tested and were, or, or were in quarantine. So they um, contacted DPH and within two hours, the um, rapid response team, which comes out to help nursing homes was out there. They brought an RN and a few CNAs to help them fill the gaps with staffing. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I've been in close touch with the uh, administrator um, and Jennifer and I both with the nursing supervisor. Um, and they've done really a great job there. They are um, in contact with families daily. They've now created an entire email listserv for all the families to be able to, to get in touch with them that way also because as they get busier, answering the phone does become a problem. Um, they had early on started um, uh, window chats, like you could come to the glass front door and people could talk through and have an iPad and that kind of thing. Um, so they're really trying to do all the communication with families. Um, when they got their first cases, they created an isolation ward um, in one of their wings that was had 18 beds. And as they got more patients who were testing positive for COVID, COVID they were op able to open a second wing. They have dedicated staff who care for um, the folks on those wings. Um, and so, you know, I feel, I have felt really good about their, their preparedness and their response. Um, it's very difficult as we're seeing in all the congregate settings like this, that You've got a lot of staff coming in, and even though they were doing all the, the temperature checks and symptom checks, um, you know, clearly um, the disease got in there, and when it's there, it's insidious. Um, but uh, they have an excellent medical director, and they are, um, I think they're working really hard to care for everyone who's there and to do the best they can to control this. And Applewood's okay? Yes, and Applewood, Jennifer and I are also in touch with Applewood. You know, Applewood's an independent living, right. so it's it's a different kind of, um, kind of beast. You no, know, they don't let visitors in, that I do know. Oh yeah, yeah. They've yeah. got great protocols in place and they, um, you know, they're part of Loomis Villages, so they right. have an entity, I think, or, or two, I think, in South Hadley. And, um, yeah, so I've I talked with the administrator. I've spoken with the um, nurse there. Um, they have really good protocols in place. 
Um, people are wearing masks, people, you know, they, um, they've done all kinds of screening, no visitors. They're doing a great job, as is the arbors. Um, they have everything in place that they should have. Um, so, uh, you know, of course, I really worry about these places where we have some of our oldest folks. Mm -hmm. uh, an another update is the housing authority, um, which operates in Whalen House and then some other um, smaller, smaller places where we've got elders. Um, DHCD, the Department of Housing. Community Development, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, just made available um, 15 N95s for all folks living in housing authorities in the state, um, plus some other supplies. And so the housing authority is being very closely watched over by DHCD. Um, and of course, we're in communication with them also. Um, I have uh, my, my, a friend of mine, his mom turned 98 last week in the Arbors. 98? <laughs> 98, wow. yeah. Wow. There's a friend of mine from uh, third grade onward who happens to have worked at UMass as well. Oh my goodness. He, he turned 65 yesterday. His mother okay. was, turned 98 the week before. So. <laughs> wow. there's, there's old and there's old. There's old, there's old. Exactly. <laughs> We're really learning that, aren't we? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Oh my God. I goodness. had heard of some concern about migrant farm workers. Have you heard anything mm. about that in Amherst? That's interesting. I haven't. Um, it was sort of a secondhand thing I heard about people headed to Waitley, I think, but they were coming in carpools from elsewhere. And maybe some of them had tested positive. Again, I don't have data. I just have the question. Yeah. yeah. Um, we don't, um, I don't know. We have, we have, Margaret farm workers have not been particularly present or visible that I know of in Amherst over time. Mm -hmm. you know, Amherst is an expensive place to live, so mm -hmm. um, it doesn't tend to be where people are living. A lot of times they're living at the farm also. Right. Um, so I don't know. Um, it's yeah. not something that I've, I've... They used to, there used to be a, a, a house slash barn on Southeast Street where some folks lived um, with the, I, I guess it's H, well, I don't know what the visas are, but, um, but anyway, I have- the Northeast. South. On Southeast. Yeah, but not recently, actually not in the last few years, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly a population to be concerned about. Um, and I know there is a, a farm worker association. They're based out of Springfield, but of course they spread out all over. But mm -hmm. that's kind of all yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. What else do I have? You know, I'm just Ju so steeped in it. Sometimes. Uh, it's not Ju yeah. Julie, I'm I'm curious if the uh, no police or anybody else much um this is a compliment with respect to masks and human behavior uh there's there, there definitely were uh social gatherings i'd say of young people related to graduation we we did a virtual graduation for i did for my department for mm -hmm. and there were definitely some students at places you know from their video feed on zoom that they were with a group of their colleagues and as you yeah. might expect but uh, and there weren't they weren't practicing the things one would practice and i know groups you know who lived people who lived in the same house made decisions and i've heard different you know things that made yeah. sense to me i'm just curious if there's been any level of negative interactions or observations or whatever no real negative in um interactions there have been you know people calling up worried concerned you know saying oh my gosh they're not doing it yeah. Um, it's a little complicated, um, yeah. and, uh, to say the least, a lot. <laughs> so one thing is that 
what, that the police chief has been educating us about is you really can't go onto private property and say to folks, you can't be doing that right there. Mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. one piece of it. So mm -hmm. the parties, um, yeah. And then, you know, it's really this larger piece of how do you get, you know, folks, young folks to comply to this, comply with this. It's a really hard thing. I mean, it's just so difficult. And so we're really taking an education um, approach to it. So the, the officers are, you know, been trained by the chief that this is all about, you know, trying to get folks to do the right thing. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't want to cause um, bad altercations and things like that. And for right. me, so much of it goes back to just like everything else we always try to enforce is that the minute we're gone, people do what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. So it's really best to take an educational approach yeah. if you yeah. have any hope in changing the behavior. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Now, as we move forward and more businesses open up, I mean, we are seeing things around the country and even some around the state where there are there are altercations and problems. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, it, it's something that we do talk about about how we move forward. Um, I think a big piece about um, about masks is the fact that. Um, the Commissioner of Public Health has has um, written out her guidance for for implementing this order, and people who who can't wear a mask for some reason, you know, some people can't breathe well enough. They've got COPD, they have bad asthma, they have other things that trigger them wearing a mask, and so um, it's difficult because people get upset if they see someone who's not wearing a mask and yet there is this ability to make a choice mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and uh, it does not require any kind of documentation there's no id that you get that says that i don't have to wear a mask anything like that so um it's a difficult thing i mean i i think what we're really mostly looking at is a cultural shift here um and i think that amherst has been doing a great job frankly um so what's yeah. going to happen when if UMass opens and we have 20,000 people return to Amherst? Well, <laughs> I think there are many, many task force at Amherst looking at how will, what will school look like in the fall, just like they are at Amherst College. We've seen Hampshire say they're going to open and they're planning for that. Um, I think that uh, this will be something that will be, you know, a true partnership in the town um, with the fact that there may be lots of people coming back. What would that look like? How would it, how would we, how are people going to be kept healthy? And um, it's a huge, huge, I'm sure John and Timothy are really aware of these <laughs> discussions. It's just seems mind boggling how mm -hmm. you do that. But we do have a great relationship with the university, so as we do with, with our other two institutions, so um, it will be a partnership. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll be open. The question of who will be here is a different one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's for sure. Right. We'll be in who the be of education, but Who's going to be here is a big question. Yeah. Well, the, you know, you're seeing announcements happen. I think somebody told me that Harvard said yesterday they were going to be remote. Uh, yes, Cal, Cal State, State, California State University, yeah. day before that. So there's there's a lot of things happening. Yeah. Julie, can I go back to the testing uh, for a moment? Um, yeah. The, CVS um, testing, mm -hmm. do you need to have a, an order to be tested from a doctor or medical provider, or is that just if you want to be tested, you drive up to CVS? Thank you for that question, because <laughs> it's interesting, you know, I, got, I grabbed this from Governor Baker this afternoon, um, but on my calls with the Department of Public Health, where um, one of our great state epis is always talking, she's talk, been talking a lot about testing. 
um, she keeps reiterating that, yes, you do need a provider. Yeah. So um, they didn't talk about that in the call. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I'm not sure how that's all going to work out. Mm -hmm. I guess the concept is this is just to increase testing capacity, make it right. simple, make it so there's not so much PPE that has to be used. Governor Baker made a really good point. Right. About you just take the swab and. Yeah. And you don't need the staff. It's just going to so. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm assuming this is not going to negate anything about a provider because. Um, Do you know, have a sense of where you drop, how you return your swab or how that part works? Oh, yes. I, don't, <laughs> I can't remember if you said that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I just sort of grabbed this little bit. It's the first I'd heard of it. Yeah, right. Well, it's something to watch. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's pretty interesting. And he's really excited about it. He says you can start signing up tomorrow, but I, <laughs> I had heard boo about it yesterday. Maybe I should go look at CVS's website. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you, uh, yesterday's, press conference was at a uh, community health center in New Bedford and uh, and and it was active but it wasn't as active as you might have thought I mean only a few cars came through in the time that the governor was there that was the backdrop behind him speaking I see that was yeah. interesting yeah. yeah I mean cars did come by and there was a team there and yeah, and all that, but, but, often those are by appointment you know you have a time to come so it's not like a Right, right. probably would have online. been. I, yeah. yeah, right, yeah. right. And again, it's it's all you know based on they have to have <coughs> staff to do it. They have to have the PPE. And yeah, they had a lot <laughs> at that point. <clears throat> well, there were five people all suited up waiting for a car. You know. Okay. So, yeah, <laughs> it definitely yeah. there was no appearance of understaff or under prep. That's for sure. <clears throat> no. Good. Good. Which was probably yeah. the intent of the backdrop. Well, that's true too. Oh, yeah. How it's done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the thing is, it is really exciting to see it happening in those community health centers because, again, when we're looking at the disparities around mm -hmm. how, how people are getting care, who's getting tested. So having yeah. the community health centers open up um, and you don't have to be a patient there, but, you know, they're located in areas where there's so many people who, who have a need. Um, how is our health center doing? Yes. So the Musanti Health Center early on when they were being, um, you know, part of this discussion around um, testing, um, we don't have, we still haven't filled positions at the Musanti Health Center. So they are not doing the testing there. Um, folks who are their patients um, are sent to Cooley Dick if they need a test. So the health center really just has um, healthcare providers a couple days a week. They have a dentist there one day a week. Um, they are really hopeful about getting a provider. Um, so, but nothing yet. Mm. Let's see if I have other things that I should bring up. Have there been any other like sectors of the businesses in Amherst that are open that people express concerns about? I guess I'm thinking about garden centers. I mean, I feel like they are pretty busy places right now. And it, it Andrews, actually, yes. <laughs> it looks a little bit like maybe this isn't good, but I can't point to anything. It just seems crowded when I drive by. They've been open, right? I yes, there, they, they moved from self-service to a more fully open status and they have it all set up in a pretty good way with like a cashier and like plexiglass and places like the grocery stores, places to wait for your turn to the cashier. But, you know, people are around plants. They're like darting in here and they want to see this and that and the other thing. Um, yeah, well, so <laughs> yes. Um, that Were has they deemed been essential? to our attention. What? Were they deemed essential? Yes. Never... Any place that sells um, any kind of vegetable plant ah. can be open. So Hadley Garden Center is open, um, Andrews, um, <coughs> yeah. Farmer's Supply, though they're probably open for other reasons too. Mm -hmm. but, um, 
Yes. So yeah. as long as as a specific business has been brought up, yes, we have um, we have gotten some concern about Andrews, and we checked in with them um, about ten days ago. But we've just gotten another concern, so um, an inspector is checking on that tomorrow. Okay. It could, it could be that they're going to need. They do have a great system there. I will say, I go nowhere, but like two weeks ago, I'm like just going to go over as soon as they open and see how it looks, you know, because I love plants. And it was really helpful for me to see that beautiful plexiglass thing they set up, the hand sanitizer, they wipe your card, really beautifully done. But yeah. I think the difficult part is how many people should you really have there at once, even though it's an outdoor setting? Not entirely um, outdoors. Right, entirely. and then there's the greenhouse. I guess you can go into the greenhouse. Okay. I, I haven't done that. Um, well, and before you were not able to go into the greenhouse. So that's another thing we're going to check on now. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, we really, it's deemed an essential business. We want our businesses. Yeah, to no, I do too. Uh, but no, I, um, yeah, we're, we're going to be working with them tomorrow and um, see what kind of support they might need to, um, much as we're talking about the farmer's market, you know, it could be that um, they need some guidelines for how to do this safely. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we'll work with them on that. Yeah, it seems like they're really trying hard to get it right. Um, exactly. I think they're trying hard. And then, but if there's nothing in place to kind of prevent the amounts of people, mm -hmm. I think that's the last piece maybe that needs mm -hmm. to be put into place. Um, because they are trying really hard. I, I was really impressed with, with what I'd seen that they set up and, and all the employees had masks on and it really mm -hmm. felt, it felt good, but it wasn't, super, there were only six people when I went, so. Yeah, now it's like with the warmer weather, it seems like it's uh, a lot more, busy, it's a lot busier. Yeah. I drove by on our, on our way, we were going out for a, a, a hike and I thought, whoa, there are a lot of cars there. <laughs> Yeah, I stopped by thinking I might look around and then I decided I was looking for one specific thing and I just walked around the periphery around where the perennials were and I said, you know, I think I'm just getting out of here. So, um, yeah, I don't know. You know, yeah, it's, uh, I think closest, well, I don't know whether it's closer to me or Maureen, but it's probably closer to me. But I walk past it a lot, but not, ne not never, in, when, not it, when, never when it's been open. <laughs> One thing I, I noticed they do, because I go by it a lot when it's not open. They used to, I used to go window shopping, but they have it <laughs> roped off so you can't just yeah. run it through the, yeah. the, window the aisles, <laughs> yes. Right, right. Well, and we, uh, we have no clue as to what sort of phase one directive will occur Monday. We have no kinds of things might open. I, yeah. Yeah. He wants to keep a top secret. Yeah. That was clear. It's, yeah. It's been a little difficult because we have a lot of people who've been like, so what am I supposed to do on, on May 18th? And so I think the message got a little confusing for folks that, um, and probably it just morphed as time went on and he created this, this group to look at reopening. Um, mm. Because mm. Uh, yeah, nothing's going to open on Monday. Um, we just don't have the guidance, so um, we'll just have to see. I saw the stages, but there's not a lot of information behind those names. Yeah, there's um, none. Like yeah. Start cautious. I don't know. I don't remember them. Right. The there fourth was, new normal or something like yeah, that. That's the, last. that's the last one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there were some new. There were some universal things that companies had to be prepared to do. The, mm -hmm. There the, were there, there there are some universal. They seemed pretty general to me. They were too general. Yeah, I'm yeah. really hoping to get um, more specific guidance because again, um, it just will be so crucial to have that come from the state, come from DPH, the governor, whatever, so that we can all just implement it. Because um, you know the comparing between towns or this yeah. and that town can do this and this one can't or this office building, it. Um, it will be really rough. Um, so, and I think I, 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 the governor's been getting a lot of feedback like that. So I think that's what maybe that's part of 
well, there's two things, right? So we're not really seeing that things have just gone like this and like, oh, open back up, mm -hmm. uh, which wouldn't be good anyway. Just, but I looked, um, at, I looked at the dashboard. It just came live about two minutes ago. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. It, it's not a good day. No. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Um, it's the way it is. So yeah, it's coming down, but it's not fast. No, it's not fast. It's not. Um, and I, you know, of course, Fauci is my my go-to. Mm -hmm. And when he says, you know. We'll just be looking at more problems if we if we go fast and we you know will on a health level but also even on a financial level it'll just set us back mm -hmm. so it, I, it seems to me like the governor is being cautious um, and yet I I just it's so hard for people who mm -hmm. they've got to work they've got to make a living yeah yeah So, um, yeah, so what, I know people ask me, well, uh -huh. what, I said, okay, so we've been doing this for nine weeks. We've been really good. We haven't seen our kids and the grandchildren long distance. You know, Erica drives by once a week. The kids stay in the car. We wave, they wave. Um, and people say, well, what do you do next? I said, well, gee, we've been really good. So we to do this for nine more weeks um I, I well, no prize for being really good yeah <laughs> we just got to keep doing it i think it uh you know we're very very lucky uh not everyone of course um but in many ways you know um it's pretty good weather it's um you know that people are working frantically to make more food available to people. I think. Um, How is the food insecurity with the with the kids and the families uh, yeah. in town? Yeah, there's a lot of people working on that, and I think um, there's just going to be more and more need. So that's that's what we're concerned about. Mm -hmm. the survival Center is doing a great job. People are donating money there. Um, the schools have got their roots where they're delivering food to families. Um, but we're just going to see over time more and more need. Um, and so uh, the senior center director um, in partnership with Highland Valley Elder Service, the meals are getting out to elders. Um, but this will be a long term problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We're going to go open the cottage, but I don't even think we're going to spend much time up there because people in the other cottages are a couple families that I, I think they don't take this seriously. So in New Hampshire, well, in, in our cottage thing and, and yeah. I'm on, I've been following New Hampshire and I'm on some town things and the people who adhere very well. And then there are other people who think, yeah, it's summer. Kids are outside. They can be together. Um, I've also seen more of the younger kids. Today, Wildwood had a teacher parade through town, and there are a couple families on our street that have been very religious about everything. But all of a sudden, I saw a whole bunch of different families lined up. Yeah, they were kind of apart, but um, they weren't quite that apart um, mm -hmm. for this watching this parade mm -hmm. of the teachers go through town to salute yeah. the, the kids yeah it's hard for people to keep this up it's really hard we're not used to in the united states having to do things that we're uncomfortable with or that we don't want to have to do mm -hmm. um, i think it's a real change in mindset and um appreciation for all that we have and uh being able to you know marshal up you know, that ability to do our civic duty. If we can't do it for ourselves, to do it for others. And I think right. that um, mm -hmm. a change yeah. in mindset for people. Um, this is hard. Values. People do hard things and they get through. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, in terms of what does it mean? Will we be doing this longer? Um, 
I mean, I think that to me, it still always comes down to that this concept of opening up is about, you know, letting some businesses start to open, you know, to, so people can have a livelihood. It's really not about us being able to have more fun or recreate more or anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the message is a little confusing to people. I mean, I think we have to be really honest about that, that it's not, um, you know, really intended that way. Um, it, it's still best to only do essential things, to stay home, to social distance, to wear a mask. Um, Did anyone see Kate Atkinson's, Atkins, is it Kate? Atkinson. Yeah. Atkinson, yeah. <laughs> um, piece about, in the newspaper about, did anybody else see about? I read it. I did. Yeah, where she talks about creating like a homestead household. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, with families with where children, you know, share two households, you know, there's two parents, there are a lot of complexities to, to how people, how some people have to manage this. Um, yeah, my grandchildren are part of one of those in Chicago. They had been before, they shared a babysitter with another family. And so mm -hmm. there's eight of them or nine of them now all kind of in it together. And yeah three out of the four go out to work and one, my son doesn't, but um, so, so far, so good. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, it, it comes down to this, you know, shared decision-making around this, you know, we can trust each other to do or not do this and to com comply in this way and yeah. But yeah, that makes me anxious to be honest, <laughs> but it, you know, it multiplies the possibilities. Well, uh, Julie, I've, I've realized that I wanted to ask um, Amherst Farmers Market. Yes. What What's happened there? Yeah. So I've um, been working with the farmers market for quite some time now. Um, again, the governor has said that farmers markets can open. There's guidance that they have. <clears throat> so um, it's really come under the inspection services department. So the building commissioner and some of the inspectors have worked really closely with the market because, um, you know, they're not used to coming up with how to do this. So the mm -hmm. town's really helped them to come up with a plan. You know, we asked them for one initially, um, but it, it just seemed like that was going to be hard for them to come up with. So been working really closely with them. And then I weigh in on, the key pieces that I think um, are important about infection control. So looking at um, having it on the town common um, instead of in the parking lots so that thing, the vendors can be much more spread out. Mm -hmm. People will be waiting in line just like they do for a grocery store, six feet apart. Um, it will be not a social event. It will just be another opportunity for purchasing food. Um, so I see it as a couple of things that folks who can go to the farmer's market and, and purchase that food, it means there's going to be more food in the grocery stores for other people because we are seeing shortages of things sometimes. Um, and then it also is, you know, we don't want all of our fresh local food to go away. We want our farmers to be able to, you know, sell their food. So, um, but the, the key part is how to make this not a particularly fun event. It's just you're going shopping. And I think people are really used to this being kind of fun and, and you know, running into people. And that's not what it's going to be. Um, Greenfield Open did this two weeks ago, I think, right? A week and a half ago. Did, have, you, yes. have you followed that or seen their plans the town exactly? The manager actually went up on their first day okay. and stood in line. They only had eight vendors. Okay. About 10 people working there. To <laughs> Now, part of that was because there's not that much food that's out yet. So it was no, just the first no. vendors, you know. Right. So I think it was partly a way for them to kind of be testing out what would this look like? How would it work? Um, and he said it was, uh, it was interesting to see what they had in place there, you know. Similar things that we're going to have partitions, um, you know, plexiglass partitions so that you're, you know, much like in a store, you're not going to be able to face to face with someone, there'll be a barrier. Hand washing, yep. hand sanitizer type of thing. Um, Is there a date? A date, uh, opening date? So, um, 
see, what is today? So 14th. Yeah, there's a hope to open by um, May 23rd, Memorial Day weekend. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the market will be prepared yet to open them, but we've been really helping them to get to that point. Um, so, um, yeah, so that might be the date. I have a couple of questions for Julie. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing the number of confirmed cases at the state level. Um, they're going like up and down and up and down. I mean, this is just a very general question. Um, yeah. They seem to be lower during the weekends on Mondays, starting to become very high Thursdays, Fridays. I'm just curious, is there any <laughs> um, reason why we see that sinusoidal type of patterns? That's interesting. Um, early on, we were definitely seeing, I haven't noticed that pattern recently, but definitely early on, we were seeing Thursdays and Fridays. And I'll tell you, all these years, it was like, you could be sure you would get all your pertussis cases on Friday from the state lab. So some yeah. of that happens with you know, when the testing happens. And um, I'm kind of surprised to see that now. Um, but uh yeah so I'm, I'm not sure i don't um because my thought is that they're just testing straight through the weekends but i could be wrong about that um it could be or maybe they're able to do less tests over the weekend especially on sunday um i don't know for sure another thing i should say about the testing so we had a, a glitch in our numbers a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. and um that was because uh, um, it was an accounting error, like someone who is a provider in Amherst actually um, on her day off went somewhere to a town much further away from here and did a whole bunch of testing, but somehow it all got linked to this one address in Amherst. And when we figured out what it was uh, and talked to the state about it, um, they couldn't remove them all at once. And so it, it took a long time and um, five or six of them bounced back on earlier this week. So um, there are these, these problems that happen sometimes too. Like sometimes we've gotten a case before that was actually for another state one time. That was because it probably went through Quest and not the state lab. Mm -hmm. um, frequently you'll get things that are for another town and then they all have to be reassigned and then the numbers jump a little bit. Um, so, I don't know if that's impacting it too, because more of that's probably happening during the week. Um, so there's a lot of kinks to be worked out. Um, I do feel confident that our initial system, Maven, which was created like back in 2000, um, it's, just a, it's just an incredibly robust, um, excellent system for tracking disease. And so um, just getting all these kinks worked out where we're having to, all these modules are having to be added because of now adding the probables and adding in the CTC. So the numbers um, are, you know, they're not always 100% accurate, but they're very close. You know, you're seeing the right trends. I have a couple of questions, but Tim, you were, you, yeah, saw, had, you had another question. Go ahead. Yes, I did. Um, I think the phase one talks about severe restrictions. Um, uh, uh, severe restrictions on whatever, you know, it says like a first phase one is going to have, uh, that means the severe restrictions are now dependent upon enforcement or at least compliance checking and whatever it is. I'm just curious who is going to hmm. follow those. <laughs> is it going to be the public health or police hmm. or fire? <laughs> what hmm. do you think? Good question. <laughs> Who's going to enforce? Um, again, we're going to be looking at it with each entity. So um, the way this is written, um, because it's coming from the governor, the police can enforce. We don't have to make them, I forget what it's called, a constable of public health or something. So when we need them to, they'll be able to enforce. But we'll be looking at having the inspectors doing enforcing. Um, but again, we're going to be rolling this out and thinking, well, what does this really mean? What does it look like? You know, a lot of it's going to be 
that education, like we've gotten a complaint, you know, we've been notified you're doing X, you can't do that, this is the way you should be doing it. Um, really hoping that we're gonna get good compliance with folks doing the right thing. Um, I think that people want to be able to have their businesses open. I think it's a small town. I think that um, it, it must be so much harder in really large communities. Whereas here, you know, there'll be eyes on things. You know, people will know, oh, well, you go here and they're not doing the right thing or, you know, we'll get a lot of complaints. And then, so I think, um, I'm hoping that this will, that people um, will be complying. I think some of the places where it might be harder is once we start opening up things um, where maybe there's not so much traffic and so there aren't that many eyes on the business or something like that. So we're just going to have to take it each piece at a time and see um, and see what needs to be done. Have decisions been made about pools and recreation for the summer? Um, hold on, I just have to. Um, no, no decisions have been been made. I mean, I I I anticipate that the governor will will either delay the fact of opening camps or pools or cancel it. Um, again, I think. Of course, when it comes to camps, it's difficult because there's two pieces there. There's the fact that we need our kids to be able to recreate. We really want them to be able to do that. And then it's also, it's often been childcare for, mm -hmm. for folks to be able to keep working. So I think there is some pressure on that concept of having camps. Um, with pools, um, even though it's a big, big bowl of chlorine, the problem is how do you do that in some way where you're just not gathering people together? Right. Um, so I would be pretty surprised um, if pools are something that move forward. Um, and the problem with camps is that, and what, what people on our statewide calls have been begging for is like, just make a decision, just cancel them because people kind of need to know. Yeah. Because they need to be able to plan because if it's part of how they manage their work. So, I'm, I'm hoping that the governor just comes out with something um, on Monday about that. Um, again, it won't be a these things are not town decisions. They'll come because uh, we've had a, we have had people asking us, um, can you, uh, you know, can the town, you know, make their own decisions? Of course you can. And we can't, especially because we just really do feel it, it'll be critical for everyone to be doing the same yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Julia, my questions are about the, the the data from the state on the on the dashboard, mm -hmm. and just one one confusing there's a couple of confusing aspects. But so let's just talk about three numbers: confirmed cases, tests, and deaths. Mm -hmm. It's clear that the number of deaths that are reported is a number, and then they're allocated to the date at which people died. Mm -hmm. So so the the bar for a particular day might be 33, but 150 deaths were reported, and that's because they were allocated to previous days. It must be that. I mean, I, I've not. Yes. Uh, that seems clear to me, and that makes sense. Um, confirmed te cases and testing. What I'm curious about is, uh, like today is a huge, almost the highest we've ever done, test 14,000. Um, is that the number of tests performed? yesterday like reported as of today and and does that go along with the positive in other words is the confirmed cases are they confirmed based on the results of the tests reported today or are those tests performed today for which results are obtained later there's there's yeah. temporal disconnects here and i'm trying to i just trying yeah. to do you do you know <laughs> yeah so right so the tests that were performed today most of those we don't have results for. I don't know what the breakout is, how many of them were rapid tests. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we've got different types of tests. So, so the um, test performed means that you have a result, not means that somebody's nose was swabbed. Test performed means that- You have a result. No. No? no? Test performed means that, 
Well, it's a good question. I mean, has the test arrived at the lab and is being processing, or does it just mean someone was swabbed? I actually don't know. But what I do know is the results are not tied to those tests. So if we did 14,000 tests today and we had 350 that were positive, those 350 were tested 24 hours ago, 36 hours ago. Um, and I so don't know. Is that what, is that what you mean? Well, yeah, well, the governor presents it differently pretty much when because he, he talks about the the number of positive and the number of cases and, and refers to a percentage for yeah. today, which means that that he's at least tying the positive number of confirmed cases mm -hmm. to the number of tests that are reported today. So I'm just Although if you if you actually figure out the percentage, it's not the percentage of the numbers that they report. Like like today's numbers are sixteen hundred and something and in terms of new cases and fourteen thousand uh tests and and they say it's 14 percent but actually if you do the math it's like 11 percent or something or 12 percent. Yeah. I, I think so i don't know i don't understand how it happens but i don't think it represents no the, but i think you're bringing up a good point i think you, that he is misspeaking by saying it that way I, I don't know. I just know that there is there is something that it is, and <laughs> it would be nice if it was clear. I, yeah, that's a really good one. I think I'm going to um, I'm going to put I just, that forward. I mean, you know, the 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 getting a, the result means that you know, you know, the late people. When you've been in the business of measuring things, you understand the difference between you know collecting a sample doing an analysis, reporting the results, <laughs> and, know, and, and which bean you're going to count. And, and, and it's only because they're being presented by dates. So there are mm, dates yeah. associated with all three of those things for any analytical work. So right, right. You know, no, samples collected, dates measured, date reported. So uh -huh. uh, I don't know which it is. Just curious. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, no, I, I, you make a really good point. I, f I feel like I know the answer, but you know, you make a very good point that that should, I should find out and that also it'd be a good thing to be kind of clarified. And I have to say, John, all I ever think about with masks is um, back in the day when we were doing the current center, and maybe I've already said this, but you would talk about, what was it, filters? Yeah. <laughs> there was no filter or whatever. So I just keep being like, masks. Come on, guys. A mask is not a mask is not a mask. You have that's a mask a, that's made out of a bandana. That is not the same as a mask that's made out of <laughs> cotton fabric with flannel or, you know, this or that. And I'm like, and also all of this is just, you know, we have so little data. So I'm always like, there's no filter. You can't filter down to nothing, you know. <laughs> you taught me well. I, I got into a geeky discussion with Rick Pelletier in our School of Public Health who's gotten money to test uh, masks or their their efficacy post uh, peroxide treatment from the surface so we, we get we get into a mechanistic discussion on that one but anyway yes they are meant they are meant to be filters to filter out these things mm -hmm. as particles their e effectiveness in doing so is subject to many variables so yeah <laughs> yes. uh, however that aside if we all wore them we would decrease the probability of being exposed to a, a significant dose. That, that's, that's what you could say. Don't spend a lot of time in one place with a lot of people and, and wear a mask. Two things you could do so simply. And if, yeah. if, I, if at the highest level we'd taken that stance from the very beginning, uh, you know, if we had a culture to do that. So, you know, it's all the Asian graduate students at UMass yeah. walk, walk around with a mask on because that's what that's life. That's normal. That's right. Big deal. Yes, that's yeah. the culture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But whereas we just can't seem to get that. I, I mean, I, I think I said this a month ago. I was shocked at how long it took grocery store workers to wear masks. I, I couldn't fathom being asked to work in that condition and see person after person after person and not have worn a mask. You know, that mask doesn't. The mask doesn't help them though. Mask helps the other person. No, well, it helps them at least at least not get a blast to their. I'm just saying. It, it, it just it, helps with the drop. It, yeah. it's, it's it's. I mean, it's yeah. the mask is what it is, but it helps both parties um, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. But the, the the certainly grocery worker hanging out in the in the in one space that's exposed to a lot of people is not bad. They need a really good mask, in fact. <laughs> that's true. Yes. <laughs> 
Right. Uh, they, they actually should have an N95 mask. And they should wear it above the nose. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw some poster that said, um, if you wear, if you don't cover your nose with a mask, it's like uh, cutting the tip off a condom. Mm. <laughs> there are other ones out there, too. Oh. Related to the same anatomy, but anyway, uh, <laughs> um, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's hard. The data uh, there. So when we're done with Corona, I do have one more, just small topic, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but I don't know if we have more. No, well, we can always come back to it too. So theoretically. We have two people stepping off the Board of Health June 30th, yeah, right. um, which is coming up. And, uh, you know, I, I haven't even had time to check with Paul about, you know, is there any concept of delaying that if we can't get people? I don't even know if you guys would be willing. Meanwhile, um, Timothy's been great about sending me possible folks um, from UMass. And... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so then what I do is I Google and I'm like, do they live in Amherst? <laughs> so I have found that Emily Kumpel lives in Amherst. All right, I'm her boss and the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to her after she gets tenure. Sorry, no, I mean, I can't speak that way exactly, but um, Emily's a great- uh, it's, it's not uh, a Emma, em, em, Well, you know, it wouldn't be the first thing I'd ask her to do. Um, there, there's a pecking order. I don't know, Tim. I'm speaking as a, a you know, as a department head and, and as her colleague. I'm a copi on grants and things with her. But uh, you know, certainly it's obviously her choice. But uh, yeah, pre-tenure faculty have to make a lot of decisions about priorities. And, yes, because uh, they have so much they have to do. Yeah, sir. That kind of service. It's not. I mean, it's not huge, but uh, it would take time. I don't know. I don't know. Do you have anyone I, to suggest from your department? Um, is David Ostendorf, is he, he's probably doing a million things, right? Oh, no, he's retired. You don't want Dave over on the board. He wouldn't do it. You don't want him on the board either. It. No, okay. no, he's too, um, I mean, he's just, he would self, uh, self, uh, regulate that. No, he, <laughs> uh, it's hard to describe. He's a wonderful guy, but, uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, very strong, like very strong opinions. It might not be the best thing to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do need someone yeah. who's a listener and a collaborator. I mean, whether they're right or wrong or whatever, it's just you need to you need to listen a lot. Um, yeah, uh, and he's a, he's a good listener. But Dave Davo's retired. Um, I, I I mean, he I, I just don't think he would. Uh, and these people are probably just they're too busy because they're probably tenure track chul park christian guzman caitlin butler yeah. and i don't even know if they live in amherst caitlin lives in northampton christian is uh, like emily except less so he just started he's in his first year um uh chul's a possibility uh he's <laughs> he's probably had COVID 19 in japan he's returning in august uh from japan you know, I, so i went in and i was looking at everyone's profiles and i saw that yeah he's he's been in japan so he's not mm -hmm. back yet oh. been there his family's been there for a year he's coming back first i was on a phd defense with him today he was he's uh coming back the beginning of august and uh he's been director of a korean school the school with korean language in south hadley for uh several years he had to give that up this year don't uh written i don't know uh he would, uh, he might want to take it on. He has a skill set for sure. Possibly. Yeah. Chul, so August Chul's is back. a ways away. But, but Caitlin's uh, in Northampton, so not a choice. Okay. Um, so her. do we have any other scientists, especially water oriented or land oriented, that live in Amherst? Who's retiring, Tim? Who do we? <laughs> retiring. <laughs> or, or, uh, as time on uh, public health. I don't know. To think that through. I mean, there's people as scientists. I mean, uh, Dave Bout lives in Amherst, groundwater person. Dave what? David Bout. 
BOT. It's a groundwater person, good Thank person, you. very busy, also. Very busy. Buddies. Oh, I guess you can't find a not busy scientist, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so it, me, who else is stepping up? Me and. And Nancy. Nancy, and yeah, Nancy. Right. And that's my other thing. I started, I went onto the board of registration and looked person. at all the nurses in Amherst. And like, <laughs> I'm going through them all. I'm like, oh, she can't do it. She can't do it. These <laughs> are just, yeah. So, all right. Well, if you all can put your thinking caps on about someone who, to someone's. Mm -hmm. um, you think about AJ, you know, and um, AJ. Oh, AJ. Wow. AJ. Yeah, AJ, Ser back in the day. Seriously retired AJ. Yes. Yeah. She's the one who trained me a million years ago, 23 mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. Took me out to lunch and said, this is how you do it, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Um, all right, well, if you I all know. want to be thinking, I just, yeah. Um, I mean, you have to think right now. I, and like you said, I assume the board, the town will, uh, this is a hard, not the easiest time to find people to do things and stuff. So the town yeah. may. And would, would you both be willing to stay on a little longer if? Uh... Yeah. Sure, I'll do what's you know, not needed. It's not my first choice, but yeah. Yeah. Also, well, I, you. you know, I imagine it's, it's still just going to continue to be just super essential business, I think, like wells and. Um, Are we going to do the tobacco regulations? You know, I so appreciated Maureen's work, but I have to be so honest, like I never pay any attention to it. None of us are. And I don't even, um, you know, June 1st is almost here. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's been any pushback. I think everything's going to move forward. Oh, um, I have a question. Iron Horse. I meant to ask this. High horse. High horse. High, high horse, horse, I mean. High horse. High horse. And Jason, is that just going to go to pass and he loses <laughs> his license, uh, his uh, permit? Um, has he been in contact with anyone? He's closed. He's closed. As far as we know, he never got a consultant. I, you know, Okay. I think sadly it's an example of a business that I... I imagine it would be pretty hard to reopen. You know, it's very difficult for all of our restaurants and then one that was. But his, his permit goes, license goes the end of May. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think, you know, given these times, I think that, um, I don't know what I think. I can have Susan check on it. Um, <laughs> Well, you haven't heard from him. Well, oh, yeah. I haven't heard from him, no. Um, and uh, I think he's just been closed. And so I don't know what to say about that. Do you have any thoughts for me? I just. I thought if he hasn't contacted you, he knows his, um, it expires. It's yeah. done, done deal. Yeah, and I think like five or six weeks ago, Susan did reach out to him. Um, so, yeah, I think some action would have needed to happen, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, but but I, I'll I'll check in on that. All right. Ask about that. Have so a bunch of restaurants have uh, do take out, but not all certainly. Right in town. Right, right. Yeah. Yep. Um, and that seems to be going well. Um, yeah, we get that. no complaints. People seem to be doing the right thing with that. Um, I think more people are taking advantage of takeout, which has been nice for the businesses. Um, I think it just must be so tough because your margin of of uh, you know keeping going is so so small with a food establishment. But yeah, there's a lot of places doing takeout. Mm. That's good. Yeah. Oh, so, and the last thing too, and Steve heard this on the call, I think, was that on the call? What? That was with the council, I don't know. We're, we're, the, the town is, lo is looking at um, doing some interim type of zoning so that um, 
you know, really wanting to help the businesses. So if there's a time when they can open up, um, if people for a period of time could have some social distance tables outside or mm -hmm. whatever it would take to sort of streamline the ability of, of um, restaurants to be able to do what they could do safely. So there's a group that's working on that in the planning department. Um, mm -hmm. And um, the bid and the Chamber of Commerce are in, you know, active discussions with, um, with the plan, with the assistant town manager and the planning department about suggestions they have for how to make businesses, to make things easier for businesses to, you know, um, be viable. Um, so that's all in the works too. And the inspectors will be a big part of that. Um, okay, so I will continue to work on Board of Health members and you guys can shoot me ideas and I will, um, I'll see if I can get an answer on the, the testing in question you had that. Yeah. Thing. yeah. Just curious. So. Yeah. If you need any help after the new guidelines come out from Governor Baker, on Monday, let us know if there's anything Thank you. you can do. Yeah, I, you know, Nancy, you've been so great about reaching out and offering, and you've all been so supportive. It's been so, you know, it's just been a whirlwind. It's just mm -hmm. so crazy. It's just like this week, I'm starting to like be able to be a little organized and to not just constantly be, you know, whack a mole constantly. So um, I feel like I, I want to do something. Can I help? I Can I do anything? <laughs> I know. Julie, this may be the calm before the storm when things start opening again. You'll have a well, lot I know <laughs> all over you with questions and I know. I, I think that might be true. Um, and so, what we've been doing, we do have a good system. So we have in a, the health department. Nancy Schroeder's our assistant, like twelve hours a week, um, and she's able to work more if we need her to. We have some public health funding from the state. So what she does is she calls into the the main line. Um, throughout the day, gets the messages, sends them to me, and I shoot them off to different places. So inspection services and the building com commissioner have been handling the business calls, which is great. And then Jen is able to focus on the real clinical calls. And then I'm doing those ones that kind of fall in there. They, you know, they really need a director to call. So that's been working really well. You know, over time, would we need some help with that? Maybe it's possible. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, we're trying to, um, you know, be communicating with folks um, when they have concerns. And yes, it's true. We're, we, can, we can probably be pretty sure there's going to be more questions and more concerns and complaints. Um, the other big thing we're trying to do, and I don't know if any of you have connections, is that like a lot of communities, we'd really like to be able to give away free cloth masks to people because, you know, over time, that's what's sustainable. You have a few for, for each family member. You can wash them. You can reuse them. Mm. Um, and we really need um, sewers and supplies. We've only gotten 200 masks so far, which is wonderful. Um, but it'd be so great if there were, you know, people out there who wanted to sew or contribute supplies to other sewers. Um, there was an outreach from the town about that. Yeah, and they're still in up. Yep. And, and um, I did sign up, but I didn't hear anything back yet. Oh, you did? I did. Because oh. I've been sewing some masks for friends and family and other places, but not, I have a friend who's probably sewed 500. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a sweatshop, but <laughs> um, <laughs> like yeah. she is. Carol. <laughs> I had a feeling you were going to do Carol, yeah. I'm yeah. a ben beneficiary of one of Carol's. I know. Um, anyway, okay. but yeah, I was just wondering about that. I I don't know how that process is working out. That, so how did you, how okay, well, that's very good feedback. How did you, did you email the, if there's an email or there's something? There's like a form, little form in the email to submit. Maybe it didn't submit, right? You know, you never know. Um, yeah. I'll check on that because... Yeah. Um, yeah, it seems like a low turnout and, um, okay. Yeah. 
And I think there were choices if you need a mask, if you would make masks, or if you had supplies. Kind of yes, I think there are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we definitely have a lot of people saying yes, they'd love when they need them. Um, so, um, okay, great. Yeah. So, if you have any, if you have any little networks or whatever that you want to tell them about that. Mm -hmm. um, of course, they took home ec out of the middle school, and so I don't know. <laughs> and my daughter has been making them. She taught her almost 11-year-old son. He's been working on them. Good for him. That's great. He says it's home ec. They cook, and he and so home ec. A painter. Great. I had a painter come by today, and he was, had made a no-sew mask out of a sock. And oh. apparently cut just cut it in a certain oh, way. Oh yeah, I've seen I've seen that. And I he said it. he did go out and buy new socks. <laughs> 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 Great idea. <laughs> Old socks. I like that. <laughs> I like uh, that. Well, that's that's one of the groups I think of is guys who like they don't happen to have a female in their life who who sews because a lot of guys don't sew and it's like there's a whole big population who might need them. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I I think that's all I have. Yeah. Who plans to meet in June or not? I think so. Okay, yeah. let's do it. Yep. Usual time, yeah. usual date. Yeah. Usual time, usual date. Good. Okay. What is please the date don't hesitate to let me know if there's it's anything I can do, Julie. Sorry. Sorry. What is it, June? Uh, let's June 11th. June 11th, yeah, June 11th. Yeah. June 11th. Yeah. Okay. Um, I especially think we need things on the books because of um, you know, things like wells and that have to go forward. And maybe, um, I know John, we always talked about redoing the well regs. That <laughs> seems like too much work, but um, it's, I just don't know if it makes sense at some point to be able to allow, does the Board of Health have to approve the, approve the wells or would we, you know, want to make it so the inspector can? Um, I don't know though, and it might be too much to take on, but just a thought. Well, anyway, I should let you all go. It's a beautiful night. And um, yeah. take care, everybody. Be safe. Be yeah. well. Take good care. Good to see you all. Okay. Yeah. Good see to everybody. see you, everybody. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. 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 bye.